Oh my word, this would save us so much money. And it is to not order stuff when I'm sleep deprived or when it's been a rough night of sleep. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah. We are gonna be talking a little bit about motherhood today, especially a few things that I will not be doing with my second baby. I currently have an almost 13 month old. She will be 13 months in a few days. And my second baby will be making her way into the world in about a month. So we kind of have a few things under our belt, which I'm kind of excited that they're a little bit back to back because I feel like I'm still kind of in like the, what, what, what do you call it? In the trenches and everything's like still so fresh in my mind. I'm still waking up during the night with my little one and now my insomnia has kicked up. So I'm definitely up almost all night long, but there are a few things that I know for a fact I would do differently with the second baby. Now, let me tell you, this is just me assuming that the baby comes out, what, how I think it's going to come out, <laughs> but I feel like this baby's going to be like, no, reject, reject because you had a plan. We'll see how it goes. But the first thing is, is that I will not be waking up my baby during the night. Now with my first little one, she never lost her birth weight. Like she never went under or anything. And I think we went to go get checked a week afterwards instead of the two weeks, just because they were checking her blood and something. I don't know what really, I do not remember. She was like literally right on track, gaining weight, etc. I did not know that you could quit waking them up at night to feed, that it's completely okay. Like unless they're underweight, unless they're premature, etc., then you want to keep waking them up and feeding them. But Miss Mam over here was a good eater since day number one. Like this girl was latched on 24 seven. And I did not know that you needed to quit waking them up. So anywho, I feel like I ruined her sleep because she was such a good sleeper, but I'd be like, Hey, you gotta get up and eat girl. You gotta get up and eat. Essentially I would feed her, feed her every two to two and a half hours. And Miss Ma'am would literally still be dozing and I'd wake her up so she can eat. Sometimes she would latch, but she wouldn't be drinking. And I'm like stressing because I'm like, girl, you need to eat. So that's one thing I will not do with my second baby. And <laughs> I hope this will also help instill good sleep habits because I feel like, you know, I feel, who knows, it could have been completely different. That if I would have let my first just sleep, I would have been able to sleep through the night a lot sooner than I did, um, which we're still not sleeping through the night. So I don't even know really. Number two is I will actually be going out during the newborn stage. I do not know why, but I was like at home 24 seven. I did not go out with friends or anything during the newborn stage with my first one because I think I just heard so much of like, oh my gosh, newborns cry so much. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be struggling, this and that. Like, and it got so much into my head that I'm like, I don't wanna be out in public having to struggle with my baby crying all the time, you know? So I feel like I stayed at home all the time. And now that I realized I was like, this was the prime age to go out. What was I thinking? Like now it's hard. Now I got to tame her or entertain her. And it's a lot harder to go out with a mobile baby than one who sleeps essentially 24 seven. So that is one thing that I will for sure be doing is calling the girls over to come over and hang out, having play dates. Also just to like really, you know, get some energy out of my little one because she has a lot. <laughs> and I feel like the newborn stage is the prime age to be doing it. Um, I don't want to be staying inside. I want to be outside, especially since it'll be like a mid August baby. We only have August, September, October, about two months, maybe three that we are able to hang out outside before we have to like, you know, be inside 24 seven again for winter time. So we're going to take advantage of it. Number three, one thing that I did, which was so stressful was follow a lot of developmental accounts. I feel like a lot of like milestones and etc. where they're like, Oh, you have to do this with your baby. You got to do this when they're up. You got to do it. It was so stressful. I feel like like this was just like more stress inducing than relieving every time my baby was up, like after that newborn, you know, stage and they're kind of being up more. Like literally I just made it my mission, my goal to entertain that baby 24 seven when it was awake, when she was awake, not it was awake. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? I'm like literally just coming into this world, seeing everything is more than enough entertainment. Seeing me cook, seeing me clean, it's like, wow, what is going on? You don't need to be like laying down with them every single wake time, just literally engulfed in them essentially like yes you can play with them yes you can breed to them but it isn't like a whole ordeal that you have to do every single time every single day and that is something that i'm gonna do differently that i'm gonna know that baby girl will be okay if she just watches me make some bread make some breakfast play with her sister etc 
I think she will be fine. Number four, I don't think I'm gonna keep track of feedings, diaper changes, nap times, as much as I did with my little girl, but I'm not sure yet on the feedings. I think that's something that I will track at least for the first two weeks because for me, I feel like when I was like, <laughs> with my first baby girl i was just like so sleep deprived i feel like because it was just me while my husband was working like 24 7 that i'm like i don't even know what time i fed you last like is, has it been two hours has it been three has it been four who knows maybe like the feedings i'll track for the first weeks but after that we're done we are done <laughs> that's about it we're gonna go straight to like three hours after you're good you're latched your birth weight's right i just feel like tracking was like more stressful because i would like <laughs> put my first baby girl down and I'd be on my phone making sure I put it in there, how long she breastfed for, make sure I start the timer, stop the timer, etc. on what side. And I don't know, it just becomes too much. And I feel like now I know what it feels like when your milk comes down. Now I know what it feels like when you're full, what side's full, what side's not. And now I feel like I know, you know, like the first time you just don't know. And you're just like, I hope I'm not breaking you. I hope I'm not ruining your life and your mental health. The next one is, I don't think I'll be hogging the baby as much. <laughs> and I think with my first, I just, maybe it's like a first time mom ordeal, but I just wanted to hold her. Like that's all I wanted to do. I did not care if I was eating in the bathroom, whatever. I just wanted to hold her. And for me, I loved it. Every second of it, I loved it. I feel like a lot of others would have also benefited from holding her and loving her and just showing her that love. You know what I'm saying? So I think this time I'll just let people, you know, hold her and I'll go do my thing. I'll go make myself some breakfast. I'll go shower. I will go clean or I'll just go take a nap. Okay. Hopefully I'm not the only one that struggled with this one in the first baby, but I will let my husband parent the way he wants to parent, not the way that I think he should parent or try to control every little thing. I feel like for me, I went through this phase where I'm like, no, you don't do that. No, she doesn't like that. No, you can't hold her that way. You should hold her this way, etc. Where I'm like, Yes, I've had experience a little more because I have a younger sibling that I took care of like all the time because I wanted to, you know, I just felt like I knew more, you know, but sometimes like some of his methods would work a lot better than mine. And I'd be like, well, maybe I should try that next time. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I would probably just like let him do his own thing without me worrying about it. Like the baby will be completely fine as long as it's not being abused or neglected your girl is fine you know nothing is going to happen another thing on top of that is i will just let him take the baby i got such bad postpartum anxiety that i would literally lose it not like crazy lose it but like i would just cry <laughs> not like psychopath you know what i'm saying <laughs> i would literally just start bawling my eyes out when he would take her because i just imagined all these scenarios in my head and i'm like my baby she's going to pass away you know and i'm like oh my gosh like it was just the worst time ever any time that he would take her i don't think i would relax and he would try to so i can sleep but i couldn't because of that and now i have to know that or understand that he's as cautious as i am as a mom he has the same love as i have as a mom you know not just because i held her for or had her in my tummy for nine months birth or etc have her essentially 24 7. That doesn't mean I love her more than he does. And actually research says that the dads release the same amount of oxytocin that the mom does. So, you know, I don't know, maybe this is childhood drama, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he'll be fine. My babies will be fine. I hope I don't get that bad of an anxiety this time or this go around. But I feel like maybe it was like new mom anxiety, but I, it was also just, I just feel like it was way heightened. Like sometimes I'd literally be sitting over there crying my eyes out over just like stuff that is like coming in my head that it wasn't even welcomed. And it wasn't even like stuff that I don't even know why I was thinking, you know? The other thing I don't want to do is focus on milestones so hard. I don't want to be Googling every single time. What should my 12 week old be doing? My 13 week old, 14 week old. I just want to let the baby be. Just let her be as long as I'm engaging with her, as long as I'm just like moving her around, not just having her laying down all the time. Unless there's something that the doctor is concerned about, I feel like I just need to let the baby be. They'll figure it out in their own time. But sometimes when you're just stuck on what milestone, when they should reach it and your baby's not reaching it, it's just like way more stressful. Like what is wrong with you? Do you have this or that or that or that or that? You know, and your baby's more than likely normal oh my word this would save us so much money and it is to not order stuff 
when I'm sleep deprived or when it's been a rough night of sleep. I literally ended up getting a lot of different swaddles. I ended up getting, I actually took the taking care of babies class course, whatever. I was literally sometimes up at night, either pumping or feeding my baby girl, watching the video and hearing it on my headphones while, and I'm like, why? Like, I honestly feel like a lot of this stuff is so targeted towards new moms or sleep deprived moms because they know they're like, you need this course. You need this swaddle. You need this binky. You need this sound machine. A lot of us moms probably spend a lot of money on sleep deprived when we're sleep deprived because we're like, we just want something. We just, we just need a little bit of sleep. And this thing is promising that because of the weight or whatever, my baby's gonna sleep. Or some influencer said her baby slept like a queen when she used this bassinet or this swaddle or this blanket, etc. Literally, I'm just going to deactivate my Amazon for a little while because I do not need to be ordering stuff and it probably would save us a lot of money. So this is kind of a little more popular now, but I feel like I don't want to swaddle my baby this go around. My first one hated the swaddle, but I'm like, we gotta swaddle you. Yeah, she liked it for a little while, but then you have to wean them out of the swaddle. And I'm just like, why is everything, why do I gotta wean a baby? Like this is stressful for me because now I gotta hear your baby cry. Now I gotta wean her with one arm out and then the other arm out and then the swaddle off. Maybe this time I won't do it. I'm just gonna let the baby be free. You got startle reflex for a reason. Now the other thing I will not be using, I think, is a binky. And let me tell you, with my first one too, she did not like a binky. We have all sorts of binkies. We have Ava binkies, we have Dr. Brown binkies, all sorts of binkies that you could ever think of. Big sizes, small sizes, etc. She would not take a binky for like the first two months, but I'm like, you have to take a binky, girl. And I don't even know why. I'm like, I shouldn't even ever gotten started on a binky. Like now she self-weaned herself because she got sick and she was teething and she didn't want a binky and she can't stand the sight of them anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, made it easier for me because I knew we were gonna have to go through this sooner or later, but I'm glad you figured it out yourself. But now I'm the pacifier, you know what I'm saying? So now I go in there and I think this is why we're struggling with sleep again is because now mama goes in her room and lays with her and then she goes back to sleep, which essentially for me, I really don't care because I love sleeping with my baby girl. And if my second one wants to do that, awesome. If we're gonna have a girl's night sleepover together with all my three girls, heck yes, I will do it as long as they want. <laughs> the last thing I think I will be doing with this one is doing a little bit more of a de delayed vaccine plan, not so much the instant vaccinations just because i personally do not think it's necessary to have them that young but that is a personal opinion i am not an anti nor pro i'm just in the middle trying to figure it out i think that's about it but yeah those are a few things that i'm currently thinking that i will not do with my second baby but who knows guys i will be back and update probably in like four months once my baby girl's three months i will come and update on what i did and did not do from the list because i do have it written down because i always like to see what i said and how it actually turned out. So anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and I will catch you guys on the next one.